pitch limit. What's going on YouTube? So today I'm just going to do a quick video on culling bass. That's right, culling, not killing, culling bass. And you need to do this if you're a tournament fisherman and if you really want to get serious about bass fishing. So I've caught up some little guys, believe me, all the big ones jump me off. But I got enough to make this video, so I'm going to show you how I do it. And what culling is, is basically keeping the bigger fish, letting the smaller fish go as you fish your tournament or as you fish throughout the day. Once I look through here and find the smaller fish, I'm going to put them on a culling beam just to be sure, because sometimes these uh, these aren't as accurate as we'd like them to be. And then that will make me 100% sure I'm getting rid of the smallest fish. So looking through my scale, I see that fish two and fish four are the smallest fish of the day. So like I said, I'm cooling down to five. I'm gonna put those on a balance beam, see which one's smaller, let them go, and do the same until I have a five fish limit. So out of fishes two and four, it looks like four was the smallest. I'd say he's only a pound, but I'm only doing this for a video. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let this guy go, and then we're gonna call fish two with the next smallest. Fish four is gone, we just let him go, and it looks like two and five now are gonna be our fish. So I'm going to put them on the culling beam just to be 100% sure I'm letting go of the smallest fish and then we'll get those fish back in the water. Alright guys, so as you can see, fish 2 is definitely lighter than fish 6 as indicated by the balance beam. So we're going to let 2 go next since he's our smallest. Bye bye too. So what we're left with is our five fish tournament limit. Which would be all of these guys here. Like I said, instructional video, I'm gonna get all these fish back in the water. Uh, the culling system I'm using is the Cal Coast Clip and Cull 2.0, and this is obviously puncture free, so don't get worried about hurting those fish. Uh, a lot of guys like pink punctures, because they stay in better, but me, I guess I'm eco-friendly. I wanna use these, and I think a lot of the tournament pros are starting to use these by regulation. So look into a uh, puncture list, Cooling system if you uh, can afford it, and if not, regular cooling system works fine. Now that we got those fish back in the water, I'm gonna get back to fishing. I'm only fun fishing today, this was completely instructional, and I'm gonna get back out there and catch the bigger ones. Oh, feels heavy. Oh, we're heavy. Uh-oh, coming to jump, coming to jump. Oh, there he is. Acrobatic. Definitely could have boat flipped that one. I don't know why I grabbed the net. 
Alright guys, so the seven fish that I caught earlier to show you how to cold bass, let those go, caught some more. These ones are a little bit nicer, so I'm going to show you them and I'm going to get them back in the water. So stay tuned and I'll show you those fish in a second. Welcome back guys, we're finally off the water. We had an awesome day, caught a lot of bass, got this cooling video knocked out, and I wanna walk through it with you one more time. If you can see here, I have two cooling systems here. One is the Calcos Clip and Coal 2.0, and the second is the Ardent Cooling Balls. So these Clip and Coals utilize these fish-friendly clips that don't punch holes in the bass's mouth, and the Ardents use the almost traditional type where it just punches a hole through the bottom of that fish's jaw. Typically, when you do that, those fish have a hard time healing that spot which could lead to them having trouble eating down the road. So if you can, invest in one that has these. These coals on the money beam slide in the top here, or they can slide in the bottoms here, if you got a really shaky fish. Or they even sell kits where you can just put the clips directly onto the beams. But this way is the easiest because once those fish are clipped and cold, you can literally just hook it on and do your balance beam to see which one weighs more. These clip and coals, these clips have a great hold. As you saw in the video, I was able to lift the fish out of the water, which really you don't want to do. You kind of want to slide your hand down and grab the fish's jaw. But those are all little fish and for the purpose of the video, I got so many hands. One thing you guys need is a digital scale that has bins. And what I mean by bins is one fish, two fish, through eight fish. You can save the weights for each one of those fish. If you want, it will tell you the minimum weight on there. And it will tell you the maximum weight on there. So 361 is my big fish today. Immediately I know that's my big fish. And I know that is fish number three. It tells me right there. You can also switch between your max weights, which would be 361 for the day, and your min fish, which would be 1.15. So I immediately know that fish 6, minimum weight 1.15, is the next fish to get cold out. I know that my max fish, my kicker, is a 3.61. Not very big, today was just a fun day of fishing, but that's a cool feature right there on the scale. Another is it tells you your total weight. So out of the fish that I weighed today, I weighed 15.80 pounds. I weighed more than five fish, so that's why it's, it's a little bit more than it should be. But that's, that's a really cool feature that I can go from total weight to my max and my min to all of my fish. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Hold on. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Share with your friends and I will catch you next time.